If you bought a 3D printer like I did to make functional prints, either A, you really like to customize your own things, or B, you're just cheap and don't wanna pay ridiculous prices for plastic. Take this thing for example. It's a cable holder that just holds your cable down onto the table. It costs about $14.99 for 40 pieces on Amazon right now. If you do the math, that's about 37 cents per piece. However, these things, a pack of 40, weighs about 44 grams. And if you take that, divide by a thousand, then you get a percentage of a filament roll, multiply that by an average cost of a filament roll, which is let's say about $30, you get about a dollar and 30 cents. If you think of that in terms of a sale, you're getting 90% off of these clips on Amazon if you were to print them yourself. But sometimes the most frustrating thing as a cheap 3D printer is when you see big prints like this fail. <laughs> I went downstairs and weighed this piece and it was about 90 grams, roughly about one tenth of a roll. So this piece over here cost me about two to three dollars depending on where you buy your filament. And on top of that, if you haven't seen why this piece failed, it's because it bowed up and it didn't stick to my table. And that ended up breaking off the fan duct, which I had to get a replacement for. Luckily, my printer was under warranty and they sent me one for free. And this could have all been avoided if the Adventure 4 came leveled like they said it would on the website. So in this video, I'll be talking everything about bed leveling. I'll be showing you my second method of how I leveled my bed, and this is working very awesome for me right now. On top of that, we'll talk about 9-point calibration and how it's actually a little bit misleading. And I'll explain to you what exactly 9-point calibration is for the Flash Forge Adventure 4. Now let's transition over to my room where I do all my 3D printing. So first off, we're going to go into the Flash for a website and check out the Adventure 4 and see what they advertise it as, just so that you guys know what you're getting into. So the Adventure 4 is the easiest and powerful 3D printer for everyone. English is a little bit off, but I guess this company is actually more of a Chinese company, so you got to give them some slack for that. It's equipped with real leveling free platform. So that's the first thing that they advertise. This printer is a leveling free printer. However, with my experience, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I've had a lot of issues with leveling. It has a larger capacity, and honestly, the capacity is the same size as the Ender 3, which is about a $400 3D printer you can get right now. Uh, that's in Canadian dollars, by the way. And for the Adventure 4, if we were to buy that in Canada, it's about $1,200. So about three times the cost of an Ender 3. It's got better slicing and cloud support. It can resume prints. The resume prints is a pretty neat feature, although probably won't use it that much. And the Adventure 4 is among the easiest and most powerful 3D printers for home, school, and office use. Originally what drew me to the Adventure 4 is just the form factor of the entire printer. It looks very clean, very sleek, and I like the black. Some of the key features is that it has quick release nozzles. One of the nozzles that it comes with goes up to 265 degrees, while the other one, the standard one that they have on there already, is 240 degrees. Okay, not really sure why they said it's a flexible platform, but it says it can do 110 Celsius. I think they mean that it's got a platform that can withstand quite a bit of heat. The build volume, 220 by 200 by 250. They do include a one kilogram filament spool. So at the beginning of this video, this red filament is actually what came with it. So I'm not super sad that I lost this red filament, about one tenth of it. It's got resume printing, as well as a built-in camera, which is fairly mediocre. Okay, so now we're actually gonna go over to the manual because this is where we learn about what nine-point calibration is. So the extruder calibration and nine-point leveling offset are included, meaning that when you originally receive the printer, it's already been calibrated at the factory. So they do suggest that when you first get it out of the box, you should calibrate the printer by using the single point. And this is because something could have gotten loose during shipping and they just wanna make sure that you have the best experience. They also state that you can use an A4 size piece of paper, even though they include a shim, which is kinda of odd that they didn't mention the shim. But you can use a piece of paper and just slide it between the nozzle and the bed to make sure that there's just a little bit of sliding room between the two. And after that single point, in general, no further adjustment is needed. Next, they say if a large size model still cannot be printed after extruder calibration or failure occurs due to uneven platform, exactly what I had here, please finish nine point leveling by calibrating all nine points. So to me, when you hear nine point calibration, you figured it should be able to adjust based on the plane shape. So if there's a tilt, for example, where this side is lower than the other side, you expect when the Z axis comes over to my left side here, 
the extruder would actually drop down a little bit further based on the nine point calibration. And same if we were to go to the right side of the bed, then because this side of the bed is actually closer to the nozzle, the Z axis should raise up a little bit. However, if you keep reading the next sentence, after calibration, the software will automatically calculate a mean value for compensation. Keyword here is it's a mean value. They take all nine points, sum them together and divide by nine. Honestly, that's probably just gonna give you the middle point. The only reason why it wouldn't give you the middle point is if the bed had a bow in it or it just had a wavy pattern on it. But they claim that they CNC machine this thing, so if there's any sort of tilt, it's definitely gonna be a tilt along one of the planes. So that's the truth about nine point calibration. And I did reach out to Flash Forge support in USA and they mentioned that that's the case. They did say though that the Adventure 4 is a lower end printer. So this feature is not exactly made for this class of printer. Printers at a higher class, something that costs maybe two or $3,000, then you're gonna actually get active Z axis compensation as you cross the plane. Or if you build your own software on the under three with a BL touch, you could probably do that as well. So now let's jump over to my printer and actually see what I did to level the bed because my bed definitely was not dead flat. There was a slant. The left side of my printer was actually lower than my right side. So I've actually moved my printer, if you guys have been watching my previous videos, from my desk to this corner over here. I've also got a couple of upgrades that I've done already, so if you want me to make a video on that, let me know in the comments down below. But here is my print bed, and it looks pretty normal. But if you actually take off the print bed, you can see that I've added these metal shims here. So I found on the left side, this metal shim that I have reads about 0.25 millimeters. So I've placed three of them. Actually, the middle one is 0.2 and the far side is 0.25. So I found the middle actually stuck a little bit too well, so I wanted to lower that just a tad. Then in the center, I've got 0.1 millimeters for this shim here. I've got 0.05 as well as 0.10 millimeters. So I've actually lowered the middle by 0.05 compared to the front edge and the back edge. As I mentioned before, the left side of the bed is actually lower than the right side, which is why the right side doesn't have any shims. So now with those shims underneath, and these are metal shims, I don't need to actually level the bed by changing the screws like I did in my other video. There is another method that I'll be showing you in a later video on how you can actually level this bed so you don't need shims. If you do wanna level your bed just like I did with these metal shims, well, if you're looking for these exact metal shims, you're actually gonna to have to pay about $100 or $200. I just got these in scrap from work, so I got them for free. But instead what you can use is either aluminum foil or you can go onto Amazon and find some copper and you can just cut that copper sheet and stack it up as much as you need to in order to level your bed. And if you're gonna use that method, you're definitely gonna want some calipers to be able to check the thickness of your aluminum foil or your copper stack up. So calipers are super easy to use. You just have to place them around the object, pinch it, and then you can see what it reads, 0.52 millimeters. So that concludes it for this video. If you guys have any other suggestions for what you want me to do with the Adventure 4, let me know in the comments down below. If you're interested in this printer and its capabilities, well, you should definitely check out this video right here because I print TPU and Flash Forge doesn't even support that. People say that with a Bowden extruder, it's pretty much impossible. I've also got my first look and unboxing of the Adventure 4 in this video over here. And that's a wrap. Hi, Mew.